What makes Apple iOS security so great? We're going to take it apart and show you how the security works in just a few minutes. At Apple headquarters, they have a master key, which is Apple's most closely guarded secret. And why is that? They use the key to create digital signatures for all of their code, for iOS, for their iPhones, for their iPads. And this key, or this signature, it's physically burned into the chip in every iPhone and iPad. And uh, during the boot process, the first thing that happens when you turn on your iPhone is it loads a boot ROM which has the signature burned into it. And the boot ROM checks the signature on the iBoot, which is the second process in the boot process. If the signatures match, uh, the boot ROM allows the iBoot to load the code. And then the iBoot loads the iOS, which is the operating system that runs on the phone. And iBoot checks the signature on iOS. If the signatures match, it allows the iOS code to run. If anything in this process fails, uh, the user is instructed to plug their iPhone back into their laptop and load a software all over again, making the phone or the iPad uh, like it came from the factory. During a software upgrade, a similar process happens. All iOS software upgrades come from the Apple server. So on every phone, uh, there are some cryptographic secrets, and there's also an ECID, which is a unique serial number for every phone and iPad. These get sent to the server, and the server responds with a signed copy of the code along with the return of the secrets and the ECID. So the phone knows that it's receiving an authentic piece of Apple software and not something that, that was intercepted by hackers. With that out of the way, uh, if we look at the cryptographic components of the phone, uh, the first thing that we have is the processor. The processor is basically the brain. And we've had processors in every single phone, obviously, since the first iPhone. But what's unique is since the iPhone 5S, we've also had a second processor called the Secure Enclave. And the Secure Enclave handles encryption and decryption. We've also got a third processor called the AES engine, which also handles encryption and decryption. And we have our flash storage, which stores all of our data for our phone. And we have our memory, which stores data that's in use by the phone while it's operating. And now we have also have a fingerprint sensor. So the secure enclave needs uh, space in the RAM where it can do its operations, but it needs to keep that RAM encrypted. How does it do that? Well, first of all, when the phone is manufactured, a secure enclave has what's called a UID, which is a unique ID. It's unique to every phone, and Apple claims to not know what it is, but it's burned into the secure enclave during manufacturing. And that UID is used to generate a key, and that key goes to the memory, and a portion of the memory on the phone is encrypted at start every time the phone boots. Now, if we look at how the iPhone manages fingerprints through the fingerprint sensor, it gets a little more interesting. When you put your finger on the fingerprint sensor, uh, the secure enclave manages the authentication process, but uh, fingerprint data first goes to the processor, and the processor passes that data on to the secure enclave. Now, if we zoom into the secure enclave, uh, what's going on here is when you first register a fingerprint with Touch ID, the secure enclave takes your fingerprint 
and converts it into a mathematical signature. A bunch of zeros and ones, basically. The fingerprint itself is discarded. So the next time you try to sign in with a fingerprint on Touch ID, the new fingerprint is received by the secure enclave and it's also converted into a mathematical signature. Uh, the new fingerprint is discarded and the two signatures are compared. Because they're mathematical signatures, two different fingerprints could have the same signature. So there's a 1 in 50,000 chance that a wrong fingerprint will have the correct signature and unlock your phone. That's why Apple only allows you five attempts with a Touch ID before asking you for a passcode. The process of generating signatures from fingerprints is known as subdermal ridge flow angle mapping and Apple has a patent. Now if we go back, so the processor itself uh, does not handle encrypted data. So it's possible to intercept the fingerprint data going from the sensor to the secure enclave. And that's why Apple has uh, another security feature which is that the secure enclave and the fingerprint sensor negotiate a key so they encrypt their data. So when data passes through the main processor it's encrypted in a way that only the secure enclave can open it. Now if you use Touch ID to authenticate yourself in an app, then the app doesn't actually receive any fingerprint data. The process is the same. Uh, you put your fingerprint on the sensor. The fingerprint travels to the secure enclave. If it's the correct fingerprint, the secure enclave authenticates you and it just tells the app that you've been authenticated.